Hey everyone, it's Cece here, and in today's video, I'm going to do a little experiment. I have three different types of string, and they're the three most common strings that people use in macrame. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use them all to create a kind of tassel or a fringe. So I'm gonna brush each kind out with a comb and show you what the difference is so that when you're trying to decide what string to use in terms of making a fringe, you can have a look at these options and decide which one is best. So let's get straight to the experiment. Okay, so the three strings I'm going to use today is a three strand twisted cord and a single strand twisted cotton cord and also a braided cotton cord. So you probably can't see right now, but I will zoom in later. These three cords are the three most common cords that we use, but they're really great for different types of things. And you'll be able to see by this experiment that they really do fringe very differently. So here are my cords all attached to my dowel. And I just wanted to mention that they are all four millimeter cords. So there won't be too much variation other than the style of the cord. Now, the only other thing I need for this experiment is a trusty comb. So now let's jump in and make some fringe. Alrighty, so here are my three groups of cords. And the first one is the single strand twisted cotton cord. The second one over is the three strand twisted cotton cord. And the third one in the group is a braided cotton cord. So let's start with the single strand twisted cord. And this cord is really soft and actually super easy to undo. So to create a fringe with this one, all you need to do is kind of twist the strands apart a little bit. You can also get a comb straight in there and start brushing and the fringe happens straight away. You'll see at first that with the single strand twisted, it does start to spin around all together. That's because the memory of the strands naturally want to twist. So you do need to spend a little bit of time just brushing these out so they get more straight. The only other thing about the really thin strands is that they can get knotted quite easily. So you can see down the bottom here, because my fringe is quite long, it's starting to get very tangled at the bottom. You can see that it's just kind of one really big spiral now. So some people at this point like to put a bit of fabric stiffener or hairspray in the strings so it doesn't keep spinning around. Uh, that will make the strings quite hard though. So you just have to, if you want them to stay soft, keep brushing them until they stay the way that you want them to. Just using my fingers now to make it kind of more fluffy. And you can see I've got my fringe all finished with the single strand. So we'll leave that one for now and let's move on to the next cords and they are our twisted cords. Now because you have three strands that are all twisted together, the first thing that you actually need to do with these ones is grab the strands and untwist them. So you should be able to see that there's these three little strands that are slowly coming apart now. And you just kind of unspin them like so. I'm just going to do that with all of the other cords. Unfortunately, I don't have any tips on how to make this quicker. Fringing is a very long process, so when you're fringing anything, use it as some time to just kind of tune out, a bit of a meditation. <laughs> you can unwind while you unwind the strings. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so now that I have finished unwinding all of my three strand cords, you can see that it kind of looks a bit like spaghetti or noodles. Uh, you can leave it like this as a really fun effect, or you can then again grab your comb and then brush out these ends to create a finer fringe. Now this is quite time consuming because these strands are really well binded together. As you can probably see by now, this is really quite time consuming and I've only just made a dint in these bottom little sections here. So I feel like if I wanted to get the same effect as these here, it would take me a very long time. These ones are also spinning around on themselves from the memory of the fibers. So I, I guess these ones would also need a bit of fabric stiffener to make them more flat. If you're using the three strand cords, it looked way better before when they looked kind of like noodles. So I would suggest only using this cord if you like that noodly look like what I had it as before. So I'm just gonna leave our second group of cords and move on to the braided one now. Now this one is going to be the most slow to create a fringe with. In fact, I probably wouldn't even try to make a fringe with these normally. I'm just going to show you why. Now, these little fibers are braided together so tightly, you have to just really kind of pull on the ends and slowly undo that braid. It's a cute little fringe at the end of the cord, if that's the look that you're going for. But if you're wanting a big tassel, this is going to take you a very long time. It seems that if you kind of pull the strands out a little bit, loosen them up, and then grab the comb and get right at the top and pull them out, it's a little bit quicker, actually. All right, so after quite a bit of time, I've only gotten maybe a third of the way up that one piece of braid. But I will mention that it doesn't seem that this braided cord has as much of the twisting once you've fringed it. So these other cords have that memory where they want to just keep flipping back around. But once I've gotten through the braided cord, it actually sits really flat and it's quite lovely. So, I mean, if you have the time and the patience to unravel a braided cord, it will probably end up looking really quite nice. If anyone does have any tips on how to create a nicer looking fringe or maybe how to undo braided fringe a bit quicker, then please leave your suggestions in the comments below. All right, I think I've had enough of the braided cord. I'm sure you guys can see what the result would be if I continued that. And there's enough there now to compare the three different cords and the result that they give when you fringe them. Alrighty, so there you go. That's how the three different strings will look when you try to fringe them. I'm sure that you can see by the different results that they are very unique and they do come in handy at different times for different projects. So depending on what you're after and also how much patience you have will depend on what string you choose for your project. I think for me, I definitely use the single strand twisted cord a lot more than the other two if I'm creating a fringe, just because it's so much softer, so much quicker to do, and you can always stop that turning by using a little bit of fabric stiffener or even hairspray and give it a really nice flat finish. So I hope you've enjoyed my little experiment today and please leave in the comments below which string you think you would prefer for your projects. Thank you so much for watching and here's to finding our peace and creativity. Mm -hmm.